All right, and we are live. So good morning, good morning out there, everyone. Welcome to another show. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Coffee with Rhonda show, where we are leaders, coaches, entrepreneurs, and we're here to brighten up your Saturday as we talk about the day-to-day -day challenges and successes really that we experience on that journey of success, whether you're building a successful life, business, or career. Before we do the rest of our intro, um, introductions and before we introduce our hosts and uh, our guests, let's just cover a few little housekeeping items here. First of all, if you're out there watching, I want you to tell us your name, where you're watching from, and don't forget to tell us, of course we wanna know what's in your cup, both physically and metaphorically speaking. We want you to like and share the video, comment on anything that resonates with you, because you know what? We want to pull you into the conversation. So um, if you be sure you're watching from the YouTube live page or the Coffee with Rhonda show Facebook page, and then we will see your comments and we can bring those into the conversation. Visit coffeewithrondashow.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't ever, ever miss another episode. And I am super excited this week because we have um, we have a new line of product um, here coming out. Uh oh, I hear an echo. All right, there we go. Uh, so, and we have a new line of products that we're really excited about. You know, we've got our gear. So, if you want to show a little bit of love, you want to represent just a little bit, then we want to be sure that you're able to do that and support us by representing. Uh, some of the Coffee with Rhonda show gear. Yay. All right. Now don't all go out and run out and get it all at one time. Okay. <laughs> we, we know how excited you are. So uh, we're really excited. You can visit coffeewithrondastore.com. Coffeewithrondastore.com. They have some really cool things out there so you can pick up whatever it is you want out there. All right. So Enough of that. Let's get back and get ready to get into the show. So we have Patricia Jordan out there. Glad to see you, Yolanda, she says. Hello, Patricia. <laughs> we have Cordelia out there. Hello from Washington, D.C. Thanks so much, Cordelia. I appreciate the congratulations. All right. So let's get rocking and rolling here today and why you all are here to really go through our conversation today. My name is Rhonda Y. Williams, and I am your host for the show. <laughs> I am an emotional intelligence strategist and leadership coach. And what I do is I help leaders and organizations shift from stuck to unstuck and from frustrated to focused by building an emotionally intelligent leadership team. Uh, so whether you're an individual professional or an organization looking to move your team, I use emotional intelligence strategies in order to do that. So now let's go through and do our introductions with our amazing team that's here with us today. Um, let's start with our guest today. Yolanda, welcome to the show. We're so happy to have you. Good morning, everyone. I'm so happy to be here with this lively group and the audience. <laughs> Uh, I am a certified health coach and I work with women. I work primarily with mature women, who help them bring back the energy, vitality, and oomph that they, they, they took them off forever. You know, one of my, um, the, the, the term that I've coined is sexy, sexy, and sisters. Okay, that cut out a little bit. Say that for us again. Sexy. Yeah, I'm not sure why that's cutting out a little bit on you, Yolanda. For some reason, I want to be sure that they get that. So I might want you even to type that in the comments as we go on, because sure. I want to make sure that they get it. OK, you're coming through now. So where are you based, Yolanda? I'm based in uh, Los Angeles County, California. So it's okay. pretty early here, pretty a Saturday morning early. You got me up early and dressed but I'm, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Wonderful. And I forgot to tell you all what was in my little Georgia cup. I'm being a Georgia peach this morning. I got my little Savannah Georgia cup and I have um, rosemary tea in my cup. So I have this amazing rosemary bush in the front of my house that is, it, it will grow out of control if you let it. But um, so I snip, take some snippets off and make my rosemary tea. So that's what I have in my cup. Yolanda, what do you have in your cup this morning? I have coffee. Uh, in my cup, but um, I have what I call fat coffee. Okay. 
Yeah, because um, I actually put fat in my foods because I'm not afraid of it. Oh. And we can talk about that later, but I have MCT oil in here. Uh, I also have heavy whipping cream. Okay, okay. And stevia. Okay, so are you doing, all right, we're going to talk about that later because I'm already, I'm like, going, I'm all going down the path already. Oh, I'm in I know, me too. So um, we're going to introduce our co-host now, but first let's just connect with our audience. Zena's out there. Good morning, Zena. Thank you for tuning in. We also have Liz out there. Liz says, sexy, sassy, seasoned sisters. I think she was trying to get the phrase. Is that it? See, see. Sexy, sassy. Now, is this better? That is better. Yeah. yeah. So let me... Um, let me just lift this up. Sassy, sexy, seasoned sisters. Sex, sassy, sexy, seasoned sisters. Got it. All right. And Nima's out there. Nima says she's got peppermint tea. Ooh, Nima, that sounds really yummy. And uh, Cordelia, yep, we heard that sound cutting out, Cordelia. Um, Paula, I have uh, to try rosemary tea. Oh, Paula, it's amazing out there. Okay, Cordelia says much better sound, Yolanda. All right, so mm -hmm. moving on now, let's go ahead and introduce our co-host. Good morning, Roz. How are you this morning? I am fantabulous. How's everybody else? <laughs> we are doing fantabulous. Yeah, doing fantastic. I like fan I like fantabulous. That's great. So, so who are you, Roz, and what you got in your cup? Well, first of all, what I have in my cup, I have ginger and honey in my cup. So I wanted, I want, I wanted ginger tea. So that's what I have. All right. Now, y'all know who I am, but for those who, if, if it's your first time on the show, I am Roz Jones, the CEO and owner of Jacksonville Best Caregivers. We're located in Jacksonville, Florida, where we provide four levels of care to your loved one: sitter, homemaker, companion, home health aid, and certified. Nursing assistant, when you can't do it all, give, give, us, a give us a call. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Roz. Zena says ginger tea. Liz says yay. Yes, they are all enjoying what we've got in our cup. So, Marae, good morning to you. Good evening for me. Oh, it's gonna be for you. It's gonna be morning soon on on uh, on Sunday. Uh, so I'm Mireille. I'm Mireille Telekima. I'm based in Perth in Australia. I'm uh, I'm the greatness engineer. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur and also a coach. And I focus my energy on helping people and uh, organizations to be the best that they can be and reach. Uh, self actualization so i'm ready for this subject today. it's uh, it's it's an amazing subject and i really really looking forward to this discussion today. awesome thank you so much Marae. we are looking forward to the conversation as well liz you have a blueberry smoothie early this morning that sounds delicious absolutely and right what you got in your cup i have lemon tea Lemon tea, awesome. That's a nice soothing way to head to bed, right? Exactly. On nice lemon tea. Let's see, what else we got out here? We got Stephanie out here. She says, good morning, ladies. Good morning, Stephanie. Um, and then Paula actually says, I drink ginger tea with dried orange peel daily. Very cool. That sounds delicious, actually. I might have to try that, Paula. And uh, all right, and so Janet's out there, ginger, lemon, and cinnamon tea. Ooh, cinnamon sounds Ooh. delicious too. All right, so our conversation and our topic today, let's dive right in. And for all of you out there, don't forget, please like, comment, share the video so others can join the conversation as well. We very much appreciate your support. So this morning, we're really gonna talk our, uh, focus our conversation around physical and emotional health when you're in that place where you're building that successful career, you find yourself, I hear some feedback. So be sure to mute yourself. Everyone mute if, uh, when you, if you're not speaking so we can try to make sure there's not any feedback here. I'm closing, making sure everything. All right, wonderful. So, um, you know, I find like, I start this way. Uh-oh, I'm still hearing an echo. I'm gonna just mute everybody. 
All right, there we go. All right, so um, one of the th interesting things for me is I find that I can get very career and task focused, right? I can get very focused on, I am a person who when I set a goal, I'm like, get out of the way because I got this goal and I'm going nonstop. In doing that sometimes though, I realize that what often happens is I will lose sight of some other very important things because I'm so focused on the goal, right? It's easy for me to all of a sudden really not pay attention to my physical and my nutritional well-being as much. Um, in fact, I went through a period where I really had to sort of step back and become much more intentional about the time I was investing and how I was caring for my body and my mind. And that's the conversation I wanna have today. Cause when you are an entrepreneur, what do we do? We work nonstop. We're like, we just gotta get it done. We're up till one or two in the morning, back up at 6 a.m. And if we are not careful, that becomes our life. And that just can't be healthy, nor is it a very much fun. Right. I, I want to have a little fun in life, too. So let's let's have that conversation um, out there. And we've got uh, one of our Ida's out there. Ida says, good evening from the Netherlands. Good evening, Ida. Very nice to see you out there. And thank you so much for tuning in and enjoying the show. Um, you know, one of the things as we think about this, let's first start. Um, I want to sort of progress through this. Let's start by talking because Yolanda, you just got us all intrigued about this fat you got all in your cup. And I'm wondering if you're doing keto or if you just add fat to your diet. So let's have that conversation. Let's start with our nutritional health, progress a little bit through the physical aspect. And then where I wanna go is how does this, what does it mean for our emotional health? Um, so that'll be kind of how we flow through our conversation. Let's start first with our nutritional health. And you, what did I do? And Yolanda, so you talk to us a little bit about what you have in your cup. So let's start there. Um, in terms of nutritional habits, when you are when you have an on the go lifestyle, are there some very specific things you should be doing? Um, I, uh, Yolanda, you might have a, a window or something open in the background because I no, I hear some feedback whenever I pull you in. I'm not sure what that is, but anyway, let's just move through it. It'll hopefully take care of itself. Oh, yeah. I think as you started saying, uh, Rhonda, when a successful career woman is usually the woman who is whole, and, you know, getting her goals done and, and climbing up the corporate ladder. And even if she's not, you know, in, in, in the workforce, still not in the workforce, still has those characteristics. And so she puts, at times puts herself second, you know, so most of us live a healthy life through, you know, throughout our lives. So we figure, well, I'm always going to be healthy. Right. We don't always realize and are not tuned with the stage that we are in. Oh, so, and I, and I really can't separate the physical from the, you know, the, the emotional or mental because they're really intertwined. I think what I would say, it's important to be in tune where you are, stage in life you are in, mm. and make those appropriate changes. Okay. So, um, you think of the whole, even the menopause period, it's called the change. Right. Now, reality, we are always, always changing. And with that, of change has to come some changes in our habits in the way we think. And I think that's where, um, that's what's missing. That's what's missing in terms of our, so, so what you're saying is that sort of that person that you were five years ago, 10 years ago, and the way that you lived at that period and stage of your life may not be what you need today based on where you are um, in terms of your age, based on what's happening in your life around you. So do we need to, okay, let's talk about this because I am terrible with this. Nutritional supplements, right? I don't use nutritional supplements. I Listen, y'all go ahead and beat me now. 
I know I probably should, but I just never have. And I'm, I need to develop that habit. Are there specific things? I am not afraid to talk about my age. I'm 52 years old, right? So should I be caring for myself nutritionally differently than I always have? Do I need to be adding some of that fat into my coffee? Absolutely. But just add the fat, your, your carbohydrates. I find that that's the one thing women do not do same way it did five years ago years ago you look at carbs that we eat that's our usually our trigger change right and that is what and you look five years and you like where did this come from <laughs> How did I get here? <laughs> you want me to do what? So I, I definitely think nutritionally, we have to make those changes. Are there certain vitamins and minerals and other stuff that we need? Yes, absolutely. Should you be getting them from your food daily? Yes. But when you look at the food supply, know the food supply chain and how foods are are, are are dealt with in terms of what 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 what's put into the foods yeah sometimes a supplement is would advise it because you, you can you don't really know what's in your food you don't right. really know the vitamins that you're getting in your food should you be eating fruits and vegetables absolutely Absolutely, because that's where a lot of your, your minerals come from, your vitamins and minerals. But supplementation is, you know, I think it's good because we don't know, unless you are growing your own food, you don't know what's in it. Right, right. And, and, and if you're eating a french fry or a hamburger here and there, then, you know, uh, it's probably... <laughs> It's probably not, not going to be a lot. Come on, Roz. Now, you know you eat some of those french fries and hamburgers with me every now and again. Roz, do you have, do you and Marae have like a nutritional, um, do you have specific nutritional supplements that you take or use on a regular basis that you feel help you maintain sort of that peak optimum level of functioning? I do. I, 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 take, I take a B12 daily, a vitamin. Um, I take a fish oil hair, skin, and nails, and uh, B12, and I take something else, but I, I, it's it's a pack that I get from uh, GNC. It's a, it's a multivitamin pack, and I take it, I put it in my purse, it's in a little pack, and I take it every morning. Okay. And so the B12 is the one that really helps me throughout the day, you know, uh, so, so my energy levels, you know, stay pretty much Consistent. like this because I, because I had, I had the um during the day I, I would i would have a, a yo-yo type you know up up you know top of the mountain down the mountain top of the, you know in the valley and so when i cut out my sugars and did the b12 i noticed that my energy was more consistent i noticed that i wasn't tired so i started that regiment last year Got and it. you know and in, increased the in water intake as well wow well that so vitamin B12 and fish oil and Paula says that turmeric helps her with joints and apple cider vinegar to help neutralize the acids in your blood. And so I think probably we've got some folks. Um, uh, Mariska joined us um, also. Hi, Mariska. How are you? Great. Thanks so much for joining. Um, and then um, I've heard a lot about this to the black cohosh um, for hot mm -hmm. flashes and things like that. I know that there's a lot of people that take that as well. Um, and then uh, Stephanie says the only supplement she takes is chewable vitamin C, uh, because if we eat a balanced diet, healthy fats and oils, then we should get a lot of um, our nutrients. But it's kind of like you said, you know, we that we we hope that's what we're getting. You know, um, we hope that that's what we're getting. But I am not exactly sure. So we're going to come back now and talk to Marae a little bit um, about what what's your regimen? Uh, let's see. We, I think we have you. I think you're muted. I actually take supplement as well. I take primarose, spiruline, vitamin C, and, uh, 
And I also make sure that one day a week I have uh, a fast because I think it helps give a break to your, uh, uh, to your system and then help you as well in, in regulating a, a, a lot of your, your, you know, your, your, your body. So I try to have, it's sometimes difficult to have a full one day, but I, st I try to have at least I have a two half a day during a week or one day full fast so that I can, you know, help my body to recover and, uh, and help the process for, for my energy as well. So yeah. that's, that's a good one. And uh, in the morning, what I do is I have lemon with a little bit of olive oil as well. I, I, I take like yeah. a teaspoon of olive oil and then, and then drink it in the morning and take, you know, a little bit, maybe one hour before having my breakfast. And then it, it helped me going as well. So you're adding fats um, as well. So we have mm -hmm. Yolanda adding fats to her diet. We have you adding fats. And it's interesting that you mentioned the fast because um, I do intermittent fasting. Um, mm -hmm. And I probably started this maybe two months ago where I, I go about 20 hours um, between meals mm -hmm. and I eat in a four hour window. And so what I'll do then is I'll um, break my fast coming off with something, a light snack. Mm -hmm. either um, sort of a, some veggies and guacamole, or I'll do um, a, um, a light thing of popcorn or something like that just to break the fast. And mm -hmm. then um, I'll have a dinner. I'll have a full dinner. And then mm -hmm. uh, I finish, make sure I'm done all of my eating by 8 p.m. And then I don't eat again until 4 p.m. the next day. That mm -hmm. has been really helping me. I've actually lost um, quite a few uh, pounds doing that. Um, even I find even if I am eating the same amount of calories in that small window, I still lose because I think that your system is really working through what it has mm -hmm. inside and internally already. So that intermittent fasting has been really helpful for me. Um, so um, Paula said, this is very informative. Thank you. Stephanie's out there. She said, she agrees we don't know what's in our food and we don't know what's in the vitamins either. How about that? I know, right? And then hot water with lemon before breakfast is supposed to be good for you. So um, I bet is out there as well. And then Sherry just joined from Los Angeles. Good morning, Sherry. So it's really interesting as we think so tell me um, just a bit, Yolanda, and then we're going to move into our discussion. We're going to move our discussion to the physical aspect of caring for your temple, caring for your body. Oftentimes, especially as women, we take so much time and we're so used to caring for everybody else. I'm not sure that we always give ourselves that really special attention we deserve in terms of, you know, really just taking care of ourselves. So um, let's, I wanted to ask you just a little bit more. You said you add these fats to your um, to your coffee in the morning. Why do you add the fats? What's from your perspective? What's the the benefit of that? The fat that I add is called MCT, stands for medium chain triglycerides. Basically, what that does it adds the fat that you need it, straight to your brain, and it helps with brain fog. Hmm. Yeah. So that's something, you know, that I made um, part of my regular routine and also do a lot of what many of the women have stated and even in the comments, apple cider vinegar. Right. Um, and that's really good. That's another you know concoction that I have in the morning. And I think what's important that make this a routine part of your day right and it becomes a habit and your body can then begin to really use those nutrients that you putting in on a regular basis and a more long-term benefit of it mm -hmm. as opposed like you know I, I i i'm glad to hear that you're doing intermittent fasting that is something that's been, you know, proven to help. We we really don't need to eat as much as we do, as often as we do, especially as we get older. Right. And I always tell people to do things that are going to be um, sustainable. Really important, you know. 
and that's why I don't believe in diets. Mm -hmm. You know, so do something that's going that you are going to be able to commit to, and that you're going to be able to sustain. Mm. So you've got to fit with you and who you are and your lifestyle and your life cycle. So I think those are all things that you know when I talk with my clients and coaching, those are all things that I bring in. That's wonderful. You know, there's a question that we had where it says, can someone discuss the benefits of um, of apple cider vinegar? Because I've heard a lot about using apple cider vinegar. Um, one of the things I've heard about it is that it can help with um, sort of harmful bacteria in the body. I've heard that it lowers um, blood sugar um, levels and, and can really help you sort of manage your, your sugar levels. Um, I've heard that sort of um, the pH balance in the body um, is helped by using apple cider vinegar. It helps you maintain a healthy pH balance in the body. I am not a nutritionist. Um, maybe there's a nutritionist out there who can go into more details about it. So I don't want to, but those are just the things that I've heard about it, um, Sherry. So uh, so I hope that that part is, has been helpful. Um, and and that, that is true. That Those are the benefits of it. Um, I don't, uh, I take it every morning before my coffee. And what I find, it um, gives me energy. Mm. And I do take it at night. It helps me fall asleep. So, you know, that's what that's how I benefit from it and how I take it. Well, let me just say this. I do know, you said Rhonda, it does help you level your blood sugar. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really, really important for a lot of people. So many people are diabetic, pre-diabetic. Yep. Close to that. So our blood sugar levels, very, very important for us to look at, monitor. Wow. Um, I mean, and... And, and that coupled with our society of carb addicted. Right. I don't, you got to level those blood sugar levels. You yeah. have to. Absolutely. Yeah. No, and apple cider vinegar with a number of other things um, can certainly be helpful. Well, I, I, you know, as we go through, I really enjoyed this part of the conversation. And it really makes me think sort of, um, you know, Bernadette's out there. Hey, Bernadette, how are you? She uh, she says MCT. She uses MCT. It's great to see you. Um, and so, you know, as we uh, we have a question, she said, uh, Sherry says, is anyone using black elderberry syrup? I, I do. You do? Yeah. Yeah. Elderberry uh, is known and you do Roz. Yeah. It's known to be very good for the immune system. Um, me and my daughter, you know, give it to to my grandson, she gives it to her her sons. Uh, you know, um, it's a regular fight colds and stuff like that. that Elderberry is very good. Oregano oil is another one. You know that's been known, and of course, vitamin C is very very important, especially during this time. All right, so I'm going to close up this conversation with this. Um, it's interesting because I, I know I need to add supplements, but one of the challenges that I have with doing so is that there are so many. I don't want to feel like I'm a drugstore, like I'm taking 85,000 supplements in the morning, like I got a whole cabinet full of supplements and I'm taking this. I, I, so I know I now, granted, I'm a nurse by background. So, you know, I, I, I kind of get the whole thing, but I've just got to settle on those few nutritional supplements that I want to bring into my lifestyle and my diet. And I'm probably just going to develop the routine of that and stop there. Roz? I was getting ready to say there's, there's liquid vitamins that you can take so where you, you, don't, you don't feel like you're taking so many. Right. So I, 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 have, I have several clients and, and I have to get the name of it, but she takes a liquid vitamin multivitamin every day and it's a little in a little bitty cup and she takes it in the morning and she takes it in the afternoon and for those people who don't want to take all the pills and because she's older she's already taken a lot of medicine so taking more you know is is just you know for the psyche is not good for some older people so 
there I have two clients, matter of fact, that take the liquid vitamins. Got it. So that may be a suggestion for people if they don't like taking all of those vitamins. Yeah. Uh, Stephanie is out there. She says, I feel you on the pills. I know, right, Steph? It can make you feel like you are you are the drugstore, right? You take it so many. But, you know, I definitely don't want to do that. Mariah? Yeah. One thing that I wanted to add is that, you know, if you don't, you're not really a fan of, you know, supplement, you, you can actually adjust your diet because, mm -hmm. you know, you, you have a lot of vitamin in uh, fruits, vegetables, and, you know, a lot of the vitamin D, you just have to go out for a certain time in, in, in the day. So you, you might actually want to do a little bit more effort on planning your diet and then, you know, you don't have to go the vitamin route. And, and I think we, we all taking vitamin because we we sometimes re really lazy at re being disciplined into our diet. In our diet. And, uh, and we yeah. use the vitamin to supplement what we, we, we're not having. Leave it to Marie to be the voice of reason to bring us back. <laughs> She's basically telling us, Rob, to leave those hamburgers and french fries alone. <laughs> <laughs> I struggle. I struggle with that. I struggle with it. You know, um, is charged. <laughs> as, yeah, yeah. As I've gotten older, I've I've had to adjust my eating habits because, you know, just like Yolanda said, I looked down one day and said, "Where did this stomach come from? Right. Oh my god!" <laughs> <laughs> and can I drop it off somewhere? <laughs> Yeah, it looks can like it's not, in, it's not leaving us. So, <laughs> yeah, can I put it in storage? Can I put it in storage? <laughs> With all that other stuff you got in the storage? <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, that's awesome. So, let's talk a little bit about our physical health. So, another thing about being a successful person, right? You're building this amazing career, you're building your business, you're excited, but you get so focused. And not only are you not as focused on your nutritional habits, but on your physical habits and maintaining your physical body that can get away from you really easily. Um, you know, I find that sometimes when I'm working, I am sitting for hours and hours and hours, and I will literally just have to get up and go for a walk or I will, <laughs> I, you know, I reveal a whole lot on this show. Y'all probably know more about me than you care to know, but I will jog around my house. Like my sons think I'm crazy because I will literally start running around the house and they're like, there she goes. I will. I'll start running around in the kitchen and I run to the living room and they're just looking at me like, okay, she's at it again. But I'm like, sometimes if I don't have time to physically go out and take a walk, I just, hey, do what it do and make use of whatever you have in front of you. So what do you all do to make sure that you're maintaining your physical health on a regular basis? So I want to say that what you're doing, really, really important. Call, I don't know if you've ever heard of this thing called NEAT. It's non-exercise activity of Genesis. Hmm. It's a big name for a very simple concept. There are certain things that we can do throughout the day that is going to help us burn calories, help us be more agile. But when we are conscious of them, and we will tend to do them even more. Right. You said when you're sitting down, find out when, you, when you're when you working, you're sitting a lot. Thing is the new smoking. Right. Oh, gosh, that's bad. Hashtag wow. that someone. Sitting wow. is the new, wow. the new smoking. Most of us sit. Think of career women. We're at our computers and, we, you know, we're sitting. So getting up and standing in itself. Right. You burn some calories. Walking around when you're on the phone, walk around as opposed to just sitting there. This is getting you moving and you are burning some calories. Um, helping yourself. Right, right. You know, that's the, these are easy things. Looking at your posture is one thing. You know, you can actually burn calories by 
Getting in, you know, like engaging your core, getting up straight in itself is getting you to burn one calorie per minute. Oh, wow. A calorie per minute? That's right. Okay. Okay. Wow. So, so studies have said that you can burn about between, you know, I would say 400, or I read 2,000, and that go that high, is four to 500 calories per day. By ending up posture, walking, strolling. I, I there are six S's. Dance, which is your posture, strolling, which is walking. And I'm like, I try to remember all of them. Um call it samba, which is really just getting up and moving. Wow. And and switching it up. I think I, I mentioned four. I got to think of the other, uh, the other two. They don't come to mind right now. Okay. But these are all things that we can do on a regular basis that will help us calories add to any formal exercise that we're doing. Well, you know, I love all of that. And there's a little interesting discussion that's sort of happening. So a while back, um, we had, you know, um, Paula who posted and said, you know, can we please discuss why we black women are used to being 15 to 20 pounds overweight? And then, you know, down here, then we have um, Yvette who, who added to the conversation and said, you know what, Latinas are used to being 15 to 20 min, uh, pounds overweight too. That's interesting. So why is it that we have assumed, why we have accepted this uh, level um, of being, right? This way of being just as a way of life and it's okay. I can tell you when I start losing weight, I will literally hear people say, don't lose too much. I'm like, what? What do you think I'm going to disappear? What What is too much? What does that mean? Why do we do that to each other? Right? So uh, so my mom, who used to be bigger when when she was younger, she's done an amazing job of getting that weight off and keeping it off. And people will constantly tell her, oh, you look too small now. You didn't lost too much weight. What is this thing that we do where we just assume that we have to be 15 to 20 pounds overweight? Does anybody... Do you guys have an answer for that? <laughs> I think sometimes it's cultural. I mean, uh, I mean, f coming mm. from you know uh, uh, an African background as well. You know, especially when you start to uh, you get married, people expect you to expand because for them, when you expand, you you actually becoming wealthy. So you have to show that you know uh, that oh. your body is actually big and which means that you you're wealthy and that's that's a cultural thing and uh and and, and we don't understand that it's actually not good for us uh, because then you start to develop uh, some diseases like diabetes and things like that which are not actually helping you in in the long run so the cultural aspect is it's one thing i don't know about african-american but i know that in a in in a lot of country uh, you know, being really big mean that you're important and uh, you you really, you know, you're smelling money. So that's, <laughs> that's that, that can be one thing as well. And I think the other the other aspect is also I should, the diet. I, should, I should be rich. I should be rich then. <laughs> you're super rich. <laughs> Oh my goodness! That is. But those are the kind of uh, concepts, and and I still remember uh, when I had my first child, and uh, my my grandmother who used to live in the village was you know helping me with my mom, and I gained a lot of weight. And at some point, you know, uh, down the road after a few months, so I, I I put myself you know starting to sport again and start to lose weight. She's like. You're right. That's not good. You have to stay like you are. You're beautiful like that. Just stay, you know, big as you are. And I'm like, no, I don't want to stay like that. <laughs> I know. It's such an interesting thing. You know, look, Stephanie says, um, you know, that they like a little cushion for the pushing. And, and, <laughs> and that's why our men expect us to stay big. But she also says, which I think is really good, we've got some really 
You guys keep the comments coming because this really is a great conversation. You know, I think mm -hmm. Stephanie out there, you also said that whenever you go into, um, oh no, Carol says that she works two jobs and goes to school full time. She has to make herself take breaks, sit outside, move, get up, fresh air. It really does help re-energize you. You know, the studies actually show that just working, 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 you actually are less productive than when you take breaks, whether it's to get up to walk to get a cup of coffee or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, they said that it's, you know, it really does help. Stephanie says she does leg lifts every time she goes to the kitchen um, and that makes her back away from the snacks. <laughs> All right, Stephanie, you know, just stop buying those snacks, girl. Just don't buy them because, you know, if they in the kitchen, then eventually they going to get eaten. So um, it's it's one of those things. Um, what what else can we do? Because I, I find that I heard uh, one of our um, guests out here said that they walk three miles a day or Let's see. I regularly walk three miles, practice yoga and meditation. Are any of you doing something like that? Because I tend to have a two, about a two and a half mile walk that I do probably four to five times a week uh, now, uh, now that it's getting nicer out because, you know, I am, um, I back away from the cold. Cold is not my friend. So if it's too cold, I'm not going for my walk. I'll rather jog around the kitchen a few more times. But if it's nice outside, I'll go do my two and a half hour walk and really and I'm going to merge these two a bit so you all can with me here between that physical aspect and that emotional aspect. Mm -hmm. So a part of that outside walking is looking around me, sort of clearing myself mentally and emotionally, allowing myself to connect with. I'm not going to get too deep into the universal forces and abundance and all of that. But all of that is out there and you see it all when you walk. And I mm -hmm. gravitate towards that. I shift everything away. I'm not worried about who said what, who was upset or angry yesterday. I'm simply connecting with nature and connecting with myself to clear that emotional space that allows me to really take full advantage of this physical walk that I'm doing to stay healthy. Anybody else have practices like that? I, I do, and um, I think it's very important as really self-care, self-love. Self-care and self-love, absolutely. You take that time to nourish yourself in every way that you can. It's a way of loving yourself, and that's a way of also being role model for the people who are watching you. Right. You know, I have two grandsons, and I, when I go visit them, they know me as grandma who loves to exercise and loves to dance. Mm. And, you know, I will put on um, exercise video, and they, they join in with me. Oh. Um, <laughs> I dance, they dance with me, and I'll do a little video, and they just love that. Live live in a, in a place where there's a, actually a um, track in front. And so when I go walking around the track, they come with me, you know, they're, they're either walking or they're riding their bike or they're on their scooter, but they know that exercise is an important part of life. Right, right, absolutely. And it brings you joy. Absolutely. You know, like you said, when you go outside, you feel better. You you begin to notice the little things that you oh, noticed before. Mm -hmm. I think during this time of the coronavirus all over the world it becomes even more important. Really get outside and thankful and be grateful for the so many things that we granted. Right. There is the physical joining, the emotional and, 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 and mental because they all work together. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is really a great conversation. You guys, they really are have some wonderful comments out here. You know, Patricia said quality of life and mobility can be enhanced with diet and weight. 
An obese woman once asked to escort her son on an amusement park ride and she couldn't fit into the seat. You know, it really just does affect our quality of life. Mm -hmm. Carol says she's starting to get more meditation, lots of prayer. We absolutely, we want success in so many areas of our life. We've got to do the work in those other areas, right? We've got to make the commitment in the, both our nutritional, our physical, and our emotional life. Roz, do you have any um, particular um, patterns that you're using in terms of your physical and emotional health? Because I, my clients are in a uh, facility. When, when they take a nap or they're eating dinner, I walk up and down the steps. Mm -hmm. So... I take, you know, I, I take at least four uh, trips up, you know, up the steps. So that's 400, that's 400 steps because it's 100 steps. So I do that four times a day. So that's been helping. Wow. Um, also, also, too, when it's time for them to ride on their scooter, that's my walk time. So I get my walk in while they're on their scooter, you know, so they're getting their vitamin D. I'm getting my walk. So, you know. It's, it's kind of subliminal. Come on, let's go outside. You need to get some sun. I say, okay, so that's my walk. Right. You know, those type of things. Um, then, then on my own, you know, besides working with the clients, I also try to get in at least 50,000 steps every week, which okay. averages around between three to four miles a day. So, okay. you know, that's the goal. And, and I jump rope. So I've, you know, I've implemented that, you know, before, uh, before all the, um, you know, virus stuff ha had kicked in because I felt myself being feeling miserable. I was mm -hmm. short of breath. I, I couldn't get into my clothes, you know, and, and I'm going to be transparent like Rhonda. My underwear was rolling down my stomach, you know. <laughs> my, <laughs> my, oh, my stomach, wow. and, it, and it was miserable. Every time I sit down, I have to pull them back up. And I got that. I did. <laughs> Serious. And then my stomach was touching my thighs. And every time I had to get up, I had to hold my stomach and get I got tired of that. That's I did. I did. That is so, not fun. Yeah. It's yeah. not fun. So I, I recognized that I had to do something. And when I walk outside, the energy that I feel, and, and I know we're not supposed to talk about the stars and the moons and the universe and all of that, but I when I walk outside, this is personal for me. Right. I feel the energy and that energy resets me and revives me and, and helps me to, to get centered. That's me. That's what I do. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, let me just take a quick station break. If you are just tuning in, we are very, very happy that you're here. We want you to know what are we listening to? You're listening to the Coffee with Rhonda show where we're having a conversation today about our physical and our emotional and our nutritional health. How do we build successful businesses, careers and lives while still maintaining self-love? self-care, doing the work that we need to do to take care of ourselves. So really quickly, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube page, you can do that on coffeewithrondashow.com. And if you haven't grabbed a t-shirt or a coffee butt mug with our new gear, you can go to coffeewithrondastore.com and pick up a shirt. We, I'm going to be giving away lots of free gifts. If you send me a picture of you in your Coffee with Rhonda shirt, you can win a free coaching session or a copy of one of my books, or we're going to do some fun things like that. This show is about having fun. This show is about learning. This show is about loving life and doing all that we can to do that. So um, Marae, do you have particular exercise habits and practices? Uh, exercise has been a, a big part of my life and it has helped me a lot in my career. I mean, uh, in my twenties, I was playing basketball in teams. And then in my thirties, I moved to Oki and uh, early forties, I started running and uh, I've been running uh, so far uh, three times, you know, three times a, a week. Obviously, I mean, I, I got hurt last year for, I, I had to stop mm -hmm. a little bit, but now I'm, I've, I'm actually resuming. I, uh, I, I Instead of running, I, I walk and I do a lot of resistance as well, um, resistance, mm -hmm. uh, you know, exercise to build a little bit more lean, you know, lean muscle, because like you say, as we age, our, you know, uh, metabolism is just slowing down so much 
So we need to build those muscles to help us to to help the body to to uh, to, to to actually keep the you know the the speed and then uh, so that you, we don't gain a lot of weight. I yeah. still have you know big stomach, but uh, <laughs> I'm trying and uh, <laughs> I, I do less than I used to do uh, in my early 40s. But uh, I'm trying to catch up. And yeah. I've been I've been setting big goals for myself. Like I was supposed to actually run my first marathon this year, but uh, with the injury that I had, I, I can't do that. But I'm postponing it to 2022. So hopefully, okay. I'm going to be 52, but that's not that's not a problem. I'll try. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you know what? I love what you said, Marie. That you know what? You're not there yet, but you're trying. Listen, for yeah. everybody out there within the sound of my voice, perfection is not the goal. You don't yeah. ever arrive. This is a journey, and it's a marathon and not a sprint, right? So we are really talking about taking little steps every day. Paula, I love your question. How do you deal with partners going stir crazy? There's no golf. There is no fishing. You know what? During this time, I would say, and I'll, and I'll toss it out to my guests and co-hosts also, I would say now is a good time to encourage some other activities, right? Develop some new routines. Try yeah. some things that you hadn't tried before. If he was used to golf or fishing and that sort of thing, and that's not available, what other options are there? You know, what other things can you do? And it, I am loving the fact that I see so many entire families out walking with the baby and the yeah. dog, and the son, and the this, and like whole groups of people are out walking together. I love that. And so um, maybe there's bike riding. Someone was saying to me, hey, I just purchased a bike. I hadn't bought a bike in forever. And now I think I'm going to do some bike riding and step it up that way. So, you know, um, what do you all think? Any advice for her on anything else she could do to help a stir crazy partner? I think, you know, the treadmill. <laughs> the treadmill. A treadmill is a really great one, too. Yeah. yeah. I, I think, you know, now that we are confined, most of us anyway, it's it's definitely is harder. Like I, I to hike. Hiking trails are closed right now in California. Mm -hmm. so my, you know, nature, etc. Um, perhaps, you know, I don't have a spouse. I don't have a partner. Doing things with that person walking around your neighborhood or or if you have a bike you can still do that even under you know our team doing things that you can do together while still keeping social distancing i think that though that's the uh, options that we have right now right right absolutely you know what i saw the other day on facebook that i thought was just amazing it was oh look at paula said she's almost 68 and she ran her first marathon at age 51 marae so there you, you go see? yeah yes yeah. so <laughs> um, uh nagil nagil or nagil i'm not sure how nagil nagil nahil it's one of them Okay, Nick, wonderful. Okay. I love to see you all ladies so active and enthusiastic. Congrats. I am 74 years young with a young heart. Good for you. <laughs> very, very, very cool. You know, I saw the other day um, a lady who was on a, a whole neighborhood that was holding a block party. And they had this music playing and everybody came out and stayed right in front of their house and they were all dancing. And so it was so cool to see everybody all up and down this block dancing, but they were maintaining their social distancing rules, right? But they were having a great time. They're yelling to each other, you know, get it, Nancy, you know, whatever is going on, having such a fun time. I think this is a time for us to tap into our creativity. What I do think is yeah. that not a time for excuses. So let me just throw that out there right now. I'm going to put my coaching hat on and say we can make an excuse out of anything. Oh, you know, the weather's bad, so I can't go out. Oh, the, you know, coronavirus. And so I can't walk around the block. Really? Come on. We can do things safely to keep our sanity. I tell people all the time, stay hashtag safe and sane right? Stay safe and sane during this time. So, um, you know, that's what I'm going to, we're going to get ready. We're, gosh, 
where did the time go, ladies? I've had so much fun today. I'm almost not even want to close the show, but we have a commitment to ourselves and each of you. We try not to stay any more than an hour. Do you know, Maria and Roz, when we started the show, we started at like 30 minutes or so. I don't know how we crept up to an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Every show is now an hour. So anyway, I hope that you all out there have enjoyed it. I hope you continue to show your support for us. We're going to do a last minute round table and ask everyone, you know, to just offer your final thoughts on um, what people can do, what you would recommend for them to maintain their physical, emotional um, or nutritional well-being as we go through this crazy time of uh, being in shelter in place orders and uh, as we are building our busy businesses and careers. So uh, I'm gonna come to uh, you last, uh, Yolanda. Let's start with you, Marae. What would be your final words? My, my final word is that uh, we, we are, you know, a multidimensional uh, uh, being. So there's, you know, you have the, the spiritual, the physical, and, uh, and we, we need to take that into account as we're building our careers, which we, we because you know you need physical activities to get the energy that you need to 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 run your business and you need your sanity as well you know so you need to take care of yourself and uh, and and make sure that you create a routine around it because if it's if it's not something that you, if you don't create this routine it's not going to be sustainable and you might be okay for some time but uh, the breakdown might be serious so make sure you, you you take care of yourself and like Rhonda was saying don't make any excuses make it mandatory for you have a, you know have a routine and take care of yourself absolutely thank you so much Marae Roz what would be your last words that you would offer to folks really looking to maintain that physical well-being and emotional well-being Roz for each person, it's 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 an individual. It's an individual. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, okay. My 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 advice is that for each person, it's individual. You have to decide what's best for you. Some people can run. Some people can walk. Some people can ride a a, a bicycle for a marathon, and some people need those little desk bicycles. You have to decide what you can handle, what your capacity is, because I can I may be able to take pills and Rhonda doesn't like pills. Mm -hmm. So we have to we have to figure out what's best. For us, but, but like we all been saying, figure out what's best for you, you know, and make it a routine. And particularly for those of us who are on the front line, like myself, you got to do something because now we you know, we are almost pushed to capacity. We're stretched you know, like a slinky, you right. know, we are really being fresh. So now we really have to step to the plate, not only taking care of someone else, but we got to take those extra steps to take care of us. But each thing that we do for each person is individual. We, there's not one blanket way to take care of everyone. Absolutely. Uh oh, she cut out a little bit. Okay, so it, there is not one blanket way. I love that, Roz. And so um, I also, as I as I come to Yolanda, I also want to just add to that um, that there is um, there's no rule to this, right? There's no, you know, there's not necessarily a you have to do it this way, and that's what you're speaking to, Roz. Being um, really comfortable with navigating this in a way that feels good for you. Right. You don't need to please anyone else. It's not what they say you should do. It's what can you do that you feel confident and comfortable with and that you feel was going to help further your journey. So, Yolanda, your last words. Um, I did all what everyone else has said. I want to add to that. You also need to be mindful of the words that we say out of our mouths. You know, mm. there's, there's a scripture that says life and death are the power of the tongue. I have heard many women, and, and when, a lot of times when I start coaching a woman, I hear her say or cry, crying, use that word. It mentally leaves the door open. Right. That what you're trying to do not working. 
So I say, you know, let's look at our words and use more empowering words. Make the decision, action behind that decision. Have someone hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. Because if not, it is so easy. Open that back door, back. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's where you are comfortable. Mm -hmm. But there's not going to be any change unless you get out of that comfort zone and become, have a new comfort zone, which takes you forward and not backward. Gosh, I love that. I love that so much. Yeah. You talked about using the word try. Uh, <laughs> Stephanie says, yes, Lord, the power of words. You know, it reminds mm -hmm. me of um, what Lady says. Um, I bet also says, thanks, ladies. This was enjoyable and informative. All of you, be sure that you've subscribed to our YouTube page so you never miss a show. But guess what? Uh, Yoda said, do or do not. There is no try. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You either do or you don't. People be like, I tried. Did you or didn't you? I know try feels <laughs> safe. Try is a more comfortable place. Try mm -hmm. gives you an, uh, uh, the ability to not hold yourself accountable because try allows you to fall back on the excuses. Did you or didn't you? And guess what? I approach that in terms of my coaching judgment free. I'm not judging you. It's a very simple question. Did you or did you not? The way I think we get there, um, and I think this builds on what all of you said, and this will be my closing remarks, is I think that you begin by designing your life. Mm -hmm. um, I mm -hmm. do what I call lifestyle design. And people are like, lifestyle design, what is that? We are going to map out the life that you want and the life that you're going to love. What does that look like? What does it feel like? What does your body look like in that life that you love, right? You've got to be detailed and specific, be crystal clear about what you want for your life. And does that life include you looking the way that you look or feeling the way that you feel or feeling emotionally overburdened and overstressed and overwhelmed? It, does that life include that? Probably not. And then if not, then it goes back to what you said, Yolanda, and that pulling in the life that you love. You know, I designed this emotional intelligence technique because people get all wrapped up in the term emotional intelligence. Well, I'm fine. Emotionally, I'm good and I'm intelligent. Hey, I got it covered. That is not what emotional intelligence is. But the technique, the technique that I use is called the UCR advantage. And it's really, really simple. It is what you what and how you understand whatever the situation or event is. What do you understand about what's driving your physical habits? What do you understand about how you feel about the way that you look? What do you understand about what it's going to take in order to make that change? Once you dig down into your understanding, then you follow that up by your communication, which is the C and UCR, right? How are you communicating to yourself, that internal self-talk? And what are you communicating externally? And then you close that with, your response, which is the R, which is what you actually do, your follow through. So the UCR advantage that I teach is really about how to be more emotional, intelligent, um, be more emotionally intelligent about life and any situation that you're encountering. So those will be my final words. You all have been amazing, amazing. Our guests out there today, our audience has been amazing. They have been chatty Cathy's out yeah, there. <laughs> I don't know, didn't keep up with the comments. Probably didn't keep up with the comments. I, I'm sorry if I missed anyone. I really tried to make sure I got everyone involved in the conversation. And uh, we have enjoyed. Thank you all for your support. We will see you next week. Before we go, ladies, one more thing we got to do. You know, we need a post-production shot. This will be what we use for our camera shot. Hello, what's in your cup? Big smiles, because I'll screenshot it right here. Yay, good stuff. All right, ladies, thank you so much. Have an amazing, wonderful rest of your day. All of my guests and co-hosts, stay tuned. For all of you out there, have an amazing rest of your Saturday. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye.